Welcome back, everybody, to the GSMC Hoops and Heels Women's Sports Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. We just got back talking about summers you should keep your eye on for the Olympics, and now we're going to transition to talk about women's hockey. We were going to talk about the Professional Women's Hockey League, their championship showdown, Minnesota versus Boston. They're battling for the title. So the PWHL will wrap up in the coming days as Minnesota and Boston battle it out in the league's first finals. No matter the results, the PWHL seem to be headed in the right direction in North America after years of concurrent leagues, voting leagues, uh, pay pay cuts, and labor issues. The PWHL has already broken numerous attendance records. According to the league this season, garnered over 40 million views and more than 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is really impressive. The PWHL is a young and relatively small league, but it can build off the growth that women's hockey more generally has seen in recent years. And like with basketball and soccer, women's hockey is a lot to offer men's hockey fans, a quick, physical, and incredibly skilled game if those fans know where to look. The Canadian Women's Hockey League, or CWHL, was founded as an amateur association in 2007, but quickly grew to become the top women's hockey league in North America. In 2015, the National Women's Hockey League, which eventually became known as the Premier Hockey Federation, PHF, was founded. The latter league focused primarily on the United States, though two Canadian teams were eventually added, and most importantly, players were paid. Both the CWHL and PHF expanded over the years, but neither was perfect and a two-league debate soon formed. The CWHL didn't pay its players until 2017. The PHF did, though, but working conditions could reportedly be challenging, and the league cut salaries almost immediately in 2016. Still, the leagues continued to coexist until 2019 when, on a seemingly random Sunday morning, the CWHL announced it was folding. Nearly two months later, the hashtag for the game movement and the Professional Women's Hockey League play, Hockey Players Association emerged from the ashes, formed as a temporary refuge for many of the U.S. and Canadian women's national team players as they work better for better wages, working conditions, and stability in a full-time league outside of the Olympics and IIHF tournaments. Four years after the formation of the PWHPA, the players were able to establish a collective bargaining agreement. Concurrently, and as suddenly as the demise of the CWHL, the PHF was acquired by Billie Jean King Enterprises and the Mark Walter Group, setting the stage for the debut of the PWHL. Just five months later, the inaugural PWHL season began on January 1st, 2024. The league's officially unrecognized player union and collective bargaining agreement is providing unprecedented structure structure and support for player rights, benefits, and salaries. The current CBA provides for a minimum salary as well as a salary cap for each team, both of which increase by 3% annually. It's both all health insurance plans, disability insurance benefits, performance benefits, including $63,250 for the championship team to split amongst players. In 2025, the PWHL will implement an elective 401k plan. Standards are laid out for transportation and hotel accommodations, pregnancy benefits, parental leave, educational support, housing stipends, and relocation expenses. While this all does sound incredibly basic for professional athletes, women's hockey has had to fight for every last benefit, no matter how basic. For example, the Minnesota team and staff had to scramble, ultimately taking two different flights to make it to their semifinal series less than a day after finding out their opponent. Coaches and equally as important equipment were forced to take a later flight, delaying practices by a day, which obviously is not good for the team. The league has since provided charter flights for the teams going to and from Minnesota. Charter flights and flights in general have infamously been a sticking point of the WNBA, with the league finally instituting a full charter program for the 2024 season. While all PWHL games have at the very least been broadcast live on YouTube, linear television deals have been scarce, particularly in the U.S., I'll say. Locally driven networks such as Sportsnet, Pittsburgh, uh, MSG, and Bali Sports have picked up games, but the league would benefit greatly from securing a national TV deal. This would provide vital sponsorship money and greater mainstream visibility, I feel like. Such deals have proven huge for women's soccer and basketball. The NWSL's current four-year media deal is valued at $60 million per year, 40 times the value of the previous deal. 
The WNBA and NBA are currently negotiating new rights with Disney, but the Women's League reportedly wants to double its right fees, currently valued at $60 million per year. Undoubtedly, with time and hopefully broadcast deals, will come PWHL expansion. A handful of players signed two or three year contracts last year, and with six teams in the league, there are a very limited number of roster spots. The key is to find the right time to expand. Independent ownership will also be a key point of contention. Right now, all the teams in the PWHL are owned by the Mark Walter Group, which invites questions about conflicts of interest, though. I'll Anyway, the NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman initially refused to get involved with women's hockey while there were two leagues. Then there are the necessary improvements to team names, logos in Jersey, a better home ring for PWHO New York, reviewing the league system for refereeing and reviewing plays and getting a real full season under its belt. But anyway, regardless, nevertheless, let's um, talk about Boston versus Massachusetts game. I'm Mass- Boston versus Massachusetts, that would, that would be interesting. Boston versus Minnesota, Minnesota game. So Boston led Minnesota 1-0 in the, um, sorry, I was loading the picture, in the PWHL finals in the first game for the Walter Cup. In game one, Boston opened the finals with a 4-3 victory in a back and forth battle with Minnesota. The game was full of momentum swings as Boston responded to Minnesota's 1-0 and 2-1 leads with equalizers. Minnesota countered Boston's 3-2 lead with a tying goal, and Boston ultimately pulled ahead with Jess Healy's winning goal at 17 minutes and 25 seconds of the second period to cap a five-goal middle frame. Taylor Heisey, Heisey, sorry if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, I think it's Heisey, had two goals and one assist, and Michaela Cava had one goal and two assists to lead Minnesota's offense. For Boston, defender Megan Keller had two assists. Susanna Tepani scored her third goal of the playoffs. Taylor Winskonskova netted her second, and Hannah Brandt recorded her first of the postseason. Aaron Frankel made 30 saves to secure a four straight playoff victory, with Maddie Rooney stopping 18 shots in defeat. Game 1 was the highest scoring contest of the PWHL playoffs to date with the teams combining for 7 goals. Both Boston and Minnesota's offenses totaled 7 goals in their respective semifinals. Boston has won both playoff games and have 6 straight victories overall at the Saga Center at UMass Lowell dating back to February 21st. The successful stretch followed a rough patch of just one win in their first 7 home games and a streak of 4 straight home losses. Boston's first home victory was a 4-3 overtime triumph against Minnesota on January 27th and their third home appearance. That contest was one of three four-goal games for the Boston offense and home ice, also counting the regular season final against Montreal in Game 1 of the final. During the regular season, Minnesota won five times and produced 14 points in 12 road games and are 1-3 on the road so far in the playoffs. Boston has played in 12 straight one-goal games, including all four of the playoff victories. Their last time Boston did not have a one-goal result was March 13th and a 4-0 loss to Minnesota Excel Energy Center. Across the PWHL, there were a total of 39 one-goal games played during the regular season, which technically represents more than half of the 72-game schedule. Boston led the regular season with 10 one-goal wins and 16 one-goal contests and are a perfect 4-4 so far in one-goal playoff games. They've won just twice all season by a two-goal margin and have just six losses by a spread of two or more goals. Minnesota had seven wins and 14 one-goal results during the regular season and are one for two in playoffs. Boston has benefited from timely goals from unlikely contributors who have made the most of their opportunities. Jess Healy scored the winning goal in Game 1 on just her third shot of the playoffs. It was just the second goal of the season for the 27-year-old who played the least for the game's six defenders on Game 1 with 9 minutes and 13 seconds, time on ice. Fourth line forward Taylor Winskowski scored the team's second goal in Game 1 on her third shot of the playoffs and logged just 6 minutes and 15 seconds of ice time. The 26-year-old scored her first goal of the season in the triple overtime marathon in the semifinals. And then we have Minnesota's Taylor Heisey and Michaela Kava found instant chemistry in game one, combining for six points total. They played on the team's top line with Captain Kendall Coyne Schofield, who chipped in one assist with the trio, all recording plus three ratings. High C, a 24-year-old rookie, scored twice with one assist on Sunday and leads the playoffs with four goals and five points. 
The first overall pick in the inaugural PWHL draft has matched her regular season goal total over the last two playoff performances and now has four goals and three assists in five total games against Boston. Kava scored the first goal of the PWHL finals and contributed primary helpers on high seas goals for the career high performance. Last season, she was named the MVP of the Isabel Cup playoffs with the PHF's Toronto Six and also brings championship experience from her time playing in Russia and the SDHL. Minnesota is expected to return to goaltender Nicole Hensley between the pipes in Game 2. It would be her first playoff to start since a 4-0 loss to Toronto in Game 1 of the semifinals. The 29-year-old from Lakewood, Colorado started 14 games for Minnesota during the regular season with one shutout, a goals against average of 2.19 and save percentage of .919. She's more than familiar with the opposition, having started four of the team's five games against Boston during the year. So now we are going to move on to the last segment where we talk about the top 10 beach volleyball players. Before we get into that, we are going to be taking a short break. So I will see you guys very soon.